Okay, so thank you for the readers and uh, nice to see everyone again. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> it's good to see you again because I've been away for a while. So little by little, I'm getting to see everybody. Again. <laughs> so today, today we're going to continue. You know, remember last week we were talking about drinking from the sources of spirituality and there are four sources of spirituality. You remember what they are? The four sources of spirituality. The Eucharist, the, the mystical body of Christ, the indwelling of the Trinity. One more. One more. Your songs, Maya. Mother Mary. <laughs> Mother Mary. So it's uh, we were remembering that. And remembering that all these sources are a path to bring us to God. You know, when we are searching for God, remember we are talking about pilgrimage. Our life is a pilgrimage. Um, so God pr provides these sources as paths for us to follow that nostalgia. Remember we said God's nostalgia for us and our nostalgia for God. You know? uh, and so we were praying on that. So this week, we continue uh, with uh, the 31st Sunday of year. Oh, how come it's not sharing? Um, hold on, eh? Sorry. Wrong, wrong press. <laughs> Today we continue uh, with the 31st Sunday of uh, this year B, you know, the cycle of year B. And as you remember, we're coming to the end already somehow, coming to the end of the liturgical year, okay? Uh, and somehow the church is trying to summarize more and more what we've all been praying. This year we're praying about the year of prayer to prepare for the Jubilee year. Do you remember? We've been saying that, and that's why we went to the sources of spirituality. The theme I would like to propose for today is taken from the gospel of this Sunday, which is, you are not far from the kingdom of God. How wonderful, because we heard, no, it's the story of this uh, teacher of the law coming to Jesus asking, what are the greatest commandments? And Jesus answered first, no, you know, uh, the commandments, no, your, uh, and then he said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. And this teacher of the law repeated that phrase with his own understanding, with his own words also. So Jesus was so touched by this man and said, you are not far from the kingdom. How wonderful for us also to hear these words you know, from, from Jesus. You know what? You are not far from the kingdom. Why? Because the kingdom is very near to you. Because the kingdom is Jesus himself. So Jesus is so near. You're not far. If you want him, he's just right there. Okay? Um, you know, last uh, week, I, I really like this uh, image about prayer as the way to go back to the source. Do you know what these are? Salmon, right? And you know when do they do this? Have you seen this? You know when a, uh, a salmon, well, they are born, and then they go downstream their whole life. Right, all the way down. And when they want to give birth to new life, to spawn, not birth, no. <laughs> they have to swim all the way back. And it's amazing. They can actually jump <laughs> all the way because you can't just swim. There are little falls like that and they have to jump all the way back. And what effort they have to do in order to have new life. Somehow prayer is this also. Prayer is like our little efforts, great and small. Sometimes it's just swimming. Sometimes it's jumping. Remember Bartimaeus last week? He had to jump. He jumped you know, to, to go to Jesus. But these are the efforts that we, we do in order to go to the source. And today, uh, the, the gospel, I like to read it in that same sense of going back to the source. But I would just invite you to ponder. You can do that. Anytime you want to. Anytime you want, you can go back to the source. How? Just think about God. Simply. Right now, as you think about God, something happens to you. No? You start to be aware of His presence. You start to feel there's somebody with you. You start to feel that, you know, I'm not alone. No, I, I, I have someone with me. You start to realize little by little how much He loves you. You know, your day is so different. With a simple act 
of remembering God and thinking about Him. So today, uh, the gospel tries to bring us back to that simple gesture of loving God by remembering Him. No? The first reading, let's take a look at the readings of this coming Sunday. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 9. This is actually uh, one of the favorite verses that our founder, Jaime Burnett, always preached during uh, spiritual exercises. You know, uh, we missionaries, we have one month of spiritual exercises every year. And then it says, this is your basic practice throughout the whole spiritual exercises. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. God alone. You no, know, this is the time for you to pray. You can love people all the time, but when it's time to pray, you pray to Him. Because He is God alone, there's no other God. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. You know, this was supposed to be Moses, not talking to the people as he gave them the law. And he was summarizing it. The summary of the law is this. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. No, uh, bring, take it to heart. Don't forget. Meaning, don't forget. This is the basic law of God. To love him above all else and in everything. Love him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. How do we do this? According to our founder, talk to him. Simple as that. Talk to him. <laughs> listen to him. Hear Israel. Not before you start to love him. Listen. Listen to him. Talk to him. That's how you remember him during the day. You know, the other day, uh, we I, I already come back from to Philippines. I was having lunch with my brothers. We were having a good time uh, chatting. And then we had our siesta. You know, it's a, our holy hour. <laughs> siesta is untouchable. Okay, so <laughs> our holy hour. And then I went there. And just one sudden moment, I felt so empty. So empty. It's like I was suddenly aware that I was alone. In the room, no, because I was I I, I was sleeping there in that, that room, and then you know what? I was just so aware of what's going on, and then you know what I said, Father. Abba, Father. You know Jesus taught us to call God Father. I said this, Abba. You know Abba is easy for me because that's what I call my dad. You know, uh, in in my dialect, uh, Daddy is Papa. Papa in in my in Cantonese. No? <laughs> So, Appa is like a more affectionate way to call him daddy, no? Appa. So, it's like Appa. No? So, it's very easy for me to adapt the gospel. <laughs> I said, Appa, like saying daddy. You know what? Suddenly, I didn't feel alone anymore. I thought I was talking to someone. And I asked him also, Dad, Appa, are you happy with me? Are you happy with me? And I was just in faith, imagining his face. According to what Jesus taught us. And what I understood is, yeah, I'm so happy you're with me. I'm right here. You no, know, uh, am I pleasing you, Father, Daddy, Papa? Are you happy? Very much. Very much. Small, every small detail that you do for me is so important for me. And I'm so happy. And I was not alone anymore. How can we recall God's presence? It's so simply talking to Him. Practice the presence of God by talking to Him. And that is one of the most basic exercises of faith, like a spiritual exercise, but we forget. <laughs> we forget to talk to God. No? It doesn't mean you cannot talk to other people, all right? <laughs> or that when you're talking to someone, you're talking to God in your head. No. But all that awareness of his presence by remembering him. Israel, listen. Remember, God alone is God. He alone can nourish you with his presence. You can be surrounded by friends. I was surrounded by brothers. But in the deepest core of myself, many times I'm alone. But God is saying, you are not alone. You're not alone. I am with you. Now practice my presence. So somehow this is what God is telling us uh, in the gospel of this day. 
So, in the gospel, Jesus repeats it. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to see, show you how the church is really emphasizing this message as we come to the end of the, the liturgical year. So the story goes, one of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? The first, no, uh, Deuteronomy didn't say this actually. So Jesus really emphasized this for us as Christians. Which is the first of the commandments? And Jesus was very clear. He replied, the first is this. Hear, O Israel. Listen. The first commandment, actually think about it, before he even says, love God, he says the first is this, listen. Learn how to listen to God. Not just talk to him, but listen to him. No, that's why we pray with the word of God, because it's the words of God. That's our way of listening. When we read the scriptures, the saints say, St. Ambrose said, no, you listen to God. No, so first is this, the first thing you should do every day, every moment, <laughs> the first, listen. And then he says, the Lord, our God, is the Lord alone. Remember, there's only one God in your life. <laughs> it's not your work. It's not your formation house. You no, know, sometimes that becomes my God. You no, know? it's not the renovations. <laughs> it's not. It's not even your brothers in the formation. Sometimes I'm worried about them. What they should do? How are they doing? Uh, how can they grow more? They're not your God. And even for us, remember, not even your children are your God. Maybe your wife is your God, not your husband. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not even. Oh, Father, am I not the God of my husband? <laughs> I'm sorry. And vice versa. <laughs> no, remember who is your God. Spend time with your God. Listen. And then he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all, and I emphasize this with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And then the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But that's second, that's second. There is no other commandment, commandment greater than these. So these two summarize all the commandments that we have. So Jesus, thank you, no, Jesus, because you simplify our lives, but also you make it more difficult. <laughs> Sometimes following rules is easier. You don't have to think. You don't have to feel. But when you love as the commandment, wow, that can be challenging sometimes, no? And with everything that you are. You know, based on these commandments of love, it's so nice, right? Actually, the, the only commandment is love as a Christian. And that's something that sometimes doesn't sink in, into our brains. What is a commandment? Go to church. Well, if you go to church, make sure you're loving when you go to church. What's the commandment? To pray. To recite the rosary. But make sure you're doing it lovingly when you pray the rosary. <laughs> what are the commandments? Don't do this. Don't do that. <laughs> are you happy when you fulfill those commandments of not doing this, not doing that? Loving is the commandment. All these other things are secondary. And most of all, love God. Love God. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, I like to inter interpret this in a different way. Morning. It's when you when God, when Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself, sometimes we used to interpret that, you know, we love ourselves too much already. <laughs> and then so. As much as you already love yourself, love others as well. No, do to others what you want to be done to yourself, right? That's the golden rule. And, you know, our founder, Jaime Bonet, used to say, but that's just the first step as a Christian. When Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself, what he means is also allow God to love you first. He used to tell us, uh, you know, um, it was nice to go on the pilgrimage and to visit again his room, his places, and the people who heard him personally directly. And, and all of them used to tell us stories. 
Thank you. All of them used to tell us uh, stories, not these older missionaries. They used to tell them, you know, as missionaries, and I think as missionary disciples, as Christians, remember one thing. We need to be well-loved. We need to be well-loved by God. Because if you're not well-loved by God, the way you love others will be very conditional. You're going to seek something from them. Sometimes we love them in order to be loved by them. No, I love you so much, but if you don't love me back, just watch out, man. <laughs> you know, we don't we don't say it, of course, no, but sometimes in our hearts we expect something back. We become very uh, very conditional. He's saying, if you want to love like God, you better let him love you first. Be loved by his unconditional love in that dialogue, in that simple listening and talking to him. Be loved by him, and you will notice the quality of your love will be very different. That is what Jesus means. He said, love your neighbor as you allow first yourself to be loved by God. No, if you are not well loved by God, don't try to love your neighbor. <laughs> That's not Christian love anymore. No, it's just coming from yourself, no, and, and self will, and sometimes our own self interest. So, how important to allow ourselves to be loved by God um, in order to love others well? We need to be well loved. We are all his missionaries, and we need to be well loved by him. So, until now, we've talked, we've talked so much about loving God, love, 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 love. <laughs> and why is it that we are so insistent that Jesus is so insistent that all Christians to love God so much? Isn't it enough to do some things, Lord? Why so much? Why so much investment in our God? I mean, I see many people, Lord, they live their lives normally. They are having all this kind. They don't go to church sometimes. They don't pray. And they look like they're having an okay life. Why is it that as Christians, Jesus invites us as followers to love God so much because of this feast day that we're going to celebrate? Do you know what this, uh, when is feast day going to be? November when? Hey, come on, November one. Okay, what is November two? All souls. When do you visit the cemetery? Supposed to be all souls, but normally we go already on all saints. Why? What is the difference between these two feast days? When are we supposed to pray for the dead? On all souls. All souls day. We pray for souls. Right in purgatory, what is All Saints Day about? To celebrate whom? The feast of whom? Which saints? <laughs> Who are the saints? Aha, good, good, good. We're getting there. <laughs> we, it is our feast. Sometimes, you know, when I first heard this in a homily by one of the priests. Well, uh, because, you know, actually, if you read the Bible, uh, the New Testament, what does St. Paul call the Christians? Saints. They were alive. Saints are not people who have lived well and then died only. Of course, we celebrate together with them. They are the saints who have reached the goal already. And they're interceding for us. They're praying for us. You say, okay, they are the saints with the capital S. <laughs> The big S. We are saints with the little S. <laughs> Still on the way, but all of us are meant to be saints here already on earth. Here. So All Saints Day is not just a feast for heaven. It's a feast to remind us to bring heaven on earth. All Saints Day. All, as I said, all. No? So what is All Saints Day? It is a reminder for us Catholics, especially as Catholics, because only we celebrate that, right? Why do you pray to saints? Have you heard that question before? Okay, because it's typical of Catholics. <laughs> so what does all saints remind us? As Catholics, it's such a beautiful thing that all of us are called to be saints. 
this is a legacy of our Catholic Church that is so, so beautiful, right? We, we think of All Saints Day, and we normally think of just those special people. But no, it's for us ordinary Christians. It is a reminder for us as Catholics that we are all called to be saints, that holiness is a path also to happiness. Another reminder. Why does God call us to be holy? To be frigid people? To be people kill joys? No enjoyment? No wine? No uh, no booze? You know, like, I have an uncle who's like, no, no eating too much. <laughs> I have an uncle. He said, like, I love the Catholic Church because he was in another church. And he said, like, they can drink. <laughs> well, that's not really a good example, but anyways. But the point here is to be holy is not just about denying yourself. To be holy is about searching the true path of happiness. To be holy is to be happy. I hope you go to church on all saints. That is a day of obligation, okay? <laughs> I and people may make fun of them, but they know what the pure heart sees. It sees God himself. So how, how beautiful uh, the Beatitudes are a reminder for us. Is, is it back on? Not yet, no? Uh, it went back. So, yeah, holiness is happiness. Wait, just let me, let me try to log back in also. Because am I locked out? When this happens, you know that's the important message, okay? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Look at all those beautiful faces of saints. <laughs> okay, enable me again to share. Is it okay? There. Can you enable me to share the yeah. co-host? Is it already not okay? Okay, great. Yeah. All right. So we were, yeah. So welcome back for those online. So All Saints is a reminder for us. I'm just saying this because it's coming up, right? This Friday. So all of us are called to be saints, that to be holy is not boring, is to find true happiness, to learn the paradoxes of Jesus, and to be joyful in the midst of anything that can happen to us, because we have God there. And the last thing that all saints reminds us, and this Sunday's gospel reminds us also, Christian holiness is about just one thing, to love him. Christian holiness is just about one thing, which I was mentioning a while ago, to love and to be loved by God first. 
That is what it means, the first commandment. Our call is to love our neighbor as ourselves, right? But first, let yourself be loved by God. Do you remember this beautiful verse from first, the first letter of John, chapter 4, verse 19? Let us love then, brothers and sisters, because he first loved us. Let him first love you. Then you will know how to love him as he loves. So the point here is, how do you let God love you? you know, I invite you this morning to just pray a bit about that also. How do you personally allow God to love you? What do you do? <laughs> what do you do in order to let God... Remember we talked about the five A's before. What do you need? What kind of love do you need? You know, sometimes we need attention. Sometimes we need... Uh, uh, what is that? Acceptance. Sometimes we need appreciation. Sometimes we need a bit of autonomy to be away. <laughs> Sometimes we need we need all these kinds of levels of love. Affection. Sometimes what we need is just a hug. No, uh, not more words. What do you need? How do you let God love you and give you the love that you need? I invite you to pray about it in your own experience. Okay, why is this important? Why is it important to learn how to let God love you in our prayer? Because as we pray, as we pray, our faith increases, our hope grows stronger, and our love expands. Faith, hope, and love. What does prayer do to us, basically? It increases our faith to believe more in God. What is the problem of our world today? A lack of faith. We don't really believe God is that good. <laughs> we don't really believe He's so real that He can love me. Really? The more you pray, the more you experience it's real. God is real. Faith increases. Isn't that what you want also for your children, your families, that their faith would increase? That they would experience God is so real in my life. When faith increases, our hope becomes stronger because we know who we rely on. Is God. And so when we don't lose, we don't lose hope so easily, we don't give up so easily, our hope grows stronger. And when our hope is strong, our love expands. We are able to love people we never loved before. <laughs> we are able to love people I don't really want to love. <laughs> we are able to love people we never even thought of loving. And we're able to love them even with a different quality of love. How beautiful it is to be loved by God. Again, going to the source like the, the, the salmon, we need to make the effort to pray. And that is what the Pope's message is you know, during this uh, preparation year for the Jubilee. So I, I'm helping to sum up also you know, these days what we are praying. I'm just going to skip this slide. So, well, uh, just I'll just read it out. It's the second half of the gospel, right? So Jesus already gave the response uh, on what are the most important or what is the most important commandment. And the scribe said to him in reply, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying, He is one and there is no other than he. So he's using his own words. You know, have you heard this theory of teachers? That the student hasn't really learned until he repeats what you say in his own words. He has not yet really understood, or she has not really understood, until they are able to say it in their own words. That's why copying is really such a, a bad thing, not plagiarism, because it's not really learning uh, for teaching. Sorry, my parents are teachers. <laughs> so, so more than giving me a long paper is tell me what you understand in your own words. And this man did the same with Jesus in his own words. He said, you are right in saying, I agree. Because I also feel he is one and there is no other than him. And to love him with all your heart and with all your understanding. So he started to interpret the mind to understanding. With all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. He combined the two. This man was able to see that these two commandments are not separated. And to do all that, he said, is worth more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices, than all the things you can do for the Lord, 
The best is to love him and to love your neighbor as yourself. It's worth more. He saw the value, in other words. No, he himself of all this. That is why when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. You are a saint. In other words, you have come to the level of being a saint. A saint is not a perfect person. A saint is a person who is not far from the kingdom of God because he understands finally what the Lord was trying to tell him or her. So having said that, I invite you to ponder, you know, this today in the prayer, I was asking, you know, how do you let God love you? And in this little exercise, I also would like to invite you to pray about how do you love God? Okay, how do you love God? Because it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. What does it mean for you? We have repeated this so many times, right? What does it really mean for you to love with your heart? If I asked you, you know, for example, Debel, how do you love God with your heart? I don't know. <laughs> what does it mean to love with my heart? No. <laughs> or, or Jack, what does it mean to love with your soul? Where is my soul? What is my soul? With your mind, it's a bit easier, right? The, the scribe already said, with my understanding, my intelligence, with all your strength. What does it mean to love with my strength, my gifts, my talents? So, so look here. This is just a little diagram I got from the internet, actually. And it gives a little tip for us to enter. Be concrete when you say you love God. When you love God with your heart, guard it. Protect your heart. Don't just let whatever enter your heart. That's one way to love God with our hearts. When you love God with your soul, what does it mean? Surrender your life to God. Your soul is all you are. Everything that you are. You, that's you, really you. Surrender. That's the way to love God with your soul. How do you love God with your mind? Renew it constantly by meditating on scriptures. Change the way you think because most probably why can't people change is because first, I'm not changing the way I think by not renewing and praying and meditating with scriptures. And love the Lord with all your strength. Serve Him. Be concrete. How do you serve God in your life? What do you do to serve God in your life? Beautiful, no? It's very, I mean, this just, uh, I saw it, I just chanced on it uh, providentially. But it's just to enter. What about you? Okay, this is just an example to help us to enter. What about you? How would you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength? I'm just going to skip a bit of this slide because I realize maybe there's a lot of content already I've given you. Okay. Um, so perhaps this is what we can do for today's prayer, no? Um, I invite you to read again the Gospel of Mark. All right, chapter 12, verse 28 to 34. If you're on Bibles, in your phones, or whichever you have, read again, pray again, read it like a love letter. Have you read love letters before? <laughs> You don't just browse through it. Read it word for word and see the person who loves you behind the letter. Ask him what he wants to tell you. What is the love he wants to offer you in this gospel? And let the word of God touch your heart. So read again Mark chapter 12, 28 to 34, like the love letter, and try to take note which word or phrase strikes you or touches you the most and why. Again, talk to God about it. Talk to Jesus. Why does this touch me? What are you trying to say to me, Lord? You know, how can I love you? you know, how are you loving me? And then second, as I was uh, uh, saying a while ago, how is Jesus inviting you to grow in loving God with all your heart, your soul, 
your mind and your strength. How is Jesus in this Sunday's gospel inviting you to grow? Because I know you all love God. We all love God with our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. But we can always grow more you know, in, in that love. So how is the Lord inviting you today? Let's pray about it uh, in this time of prayer. And then we can, as usual, have our sharing. Let's ask also Mother Mary to accompany us in our meditation of the word, knowing that she's the one who has loved the word most amongst all human beings.